my next point. Don't smoke crack. All right, everyone, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talking to Tim. I must be smoking crack, because you want to know why? I see the old giant unis from the 80s and the 90s. I'm seeing it all over Twitter. I'm seeing it all over the giant sphere. I'm seeing it everywhere. And you know what? I love it. Being an old school giant fan, watching the Giants in 76, some of the best uniforms the Giants ever had outside of maybe in the 50s would be the 80s and the 90s uniforms. They're going to be home games against Chicago Bears October 2nd and versus the Commanders December 4th. The Giants will also have game day events around those classic matchups to encapsulate a celebration of a successful era. That was, of course, from the Giants press release. I love it. I love it. Mara finally done something right. Mara says, I get the letters, Giants fans, all the time about sub, uh, different subjects. A lot of them write to me about the uniforms. They want to see the uniforms used again, at least in our home, some of our games. And that kind of led to this. They're awesome. I, I truly, truly, truly love these uniforms. I do. I love them all the time. It's a classic giant thing. If you grew up in the 80s and the 90s, you see these uniforms, you think harken back to the days of yore. Seeing the likes of Lawrence Taylor, Harry Carson, Carl Banks, Byron Guyton, roaming the sidelines with Gary Reasons with a big stop against Bobby Humphrey in the ice and the snow. I just love doing the John Bassett. You know what? It's a great thing. It's you finally got something right. You finally went away from a medium Pepsi and gave the Giants something that they want, the fans that they need, something that redefines the organization a little bit, something that turns around and makes them special again. And I'm excited about it. I'm happy about it. I I, I don't know what else to say about it. It, it just reminds me of, of I, I always think of the NFC Championship game and that swirling wind in 86 against beating Jay Schrader and the Washington Redskins. I'll say it because it was back in the 80s because you could say Redskins back then. Um, I was at that game. I mentioned that a million times. That was awesome. That was great. I'm excited. I'm happy. Also, you know, we got some big news today. We're going to do a stream at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Big stream coming out. It's going to be with our old buddy. Can't tell you who, but it's a stream. (laughs) That you have an idea who's going to be on the stream. Uh, we're going to make a special announcement on the stream about the August 21st preseason game. So uh, also we're going to be talking about the ticket giveaway, Coaches Club ticket giveaway for that game against the Cincinnati Bengals. You'll get to hang out with me, OGR Sports, James Williams, and a special surprise guest, or I should say a celebrity is going to be there as well. Stay tuned. 4 p.m. That's why this video is going to be short today, but 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I wanted to do a rookie profile real quick because I bust this chi- I, I bust this kid's chops all the time. And, I, and I'm not doing it intentionally. I'm really not. But I always think of Yusef Corker. I really do. He was a red shirt senior, 6'1", 203 pounds out of Kentucky. I, I, I laugh because you hear so much about him being the future of the secondary. Starting alongside Xavier McKinney. And that's a big, that's a Herculean task for a kid that's a rookie. And and not even that, but an undrafted free agent. This kid was a four-star recruit out of Georgia. I believe he was in the top 150 prospects that year. And I think it was in the 2000, uh, well, let's see, he drafted this year's for uh, 2017. Um, He didn't play a lot, you know. He played 13 games as a reserve. He had eight tackles his for a retro freshman season. He stepped into the starting role back in 19, leading the Wildcats. I believe he had, let me see here. He had 74 tackles, one interceptions, four pass breakups, and 13 contests. He started then, let's see, 11 games in 2020 with 77 tackles, two and a half for loss, two interceptions, two pass breakup. He led the UK pass breakups in 2021 and set a career high with 81 tackles, three and a half for a loss, and 13 starts. His uncle, of course, uh, those who do not know, is Anthony Mitchell, who played six years in the NFL. Um, And uh, I think his cousin, I think his cousin was a running back uh, on Kentucky from 2010 to 2000, I think, 14, 13, I'm not sure. Uh, But how did this kid go undrafted then? If you look at these stats, how, Lord, why, Lord, why? You know what? Because if you take a look at it, he's a hitter. He's a thumper. I like calling him a thumper. He's a bell rattler. He's a snot bubbler. That's one of those guys. 
He likes to have contact. He likes to get up on the line. He likes to attack the line and meet the ball carrier at the line of the scrimmage. He's not a guy that's going to play six, seven yards deep. He is a guy that has this, this, this thought process, this demeanor that he is going to go out and attack, that he's going to strike first, strike first, strike hard. I like the way he tackles. It took me a while to find a lot of film on him uh, at Kentucky, but I like the way he tackles. He's a good tackler. He squares up. He wraps around. He drives with his legs. Very instinctive. Really is. He's, he's got one of those. In some ways, he's got one of those Mike Singletary eye sets boop, 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 where he's scanning from sideline to sideline, which is great. Um, he does have a nice burst at times uh, when he's not in coverage in reference to attacking the ball carriers. Uh, he, you know, he's he he. I think he can improve on actually kind of timing in reference to using his hands to swap some more balls down. But I think that's something that's going to come with time. Very fluid tackler, a very aggressive tackler. Could uh, too small, too small to be a linebacker, too slow to be a strong safety at times, but there are some problems. There are some issues with him. He missed. If you go watch, go watch some of the Kentucky films. He is not a good open field tackler. He's not, not even close. It's like swing. That's ball number three. I should ball number three. I'm going to go back and do my Bob Euchre now. Here's the pitch. Oh, strike three. He does miss a lot in the open field. He struggles at times because I think it's more of a technical thing. While he is a proficient tackler, I think sometimes he gets relaxed on his technique when, and he doesn't wrap around and he doesn't fully he if you watch him he at times he is a technically proficient tackler but at times I think he kind of lacks on his technique or slacks on his technique now this is this kid is not going to be what you would call a burner he doesn't backpedal well right now he really doesn't he, he looks he looks a little tight in coverage they always they always use the word he does he doesn't have fluid hips he really doesn't. If you watch, he doesn't turn well. Um, he can be exploited. If you watch again, watch some of the Kentucky film. He can be exploited in coverage. And when he's standing there alone, <clears throat> excuse me, when he's on Revis Island, welcome to Fantasy Island. When he's on Revis Island, bad things happen. And while he is good at times from sideline to sidelines, his what they refer to as and I always love it because I was looking up a scattering report his they refer to as lateral transition that means his ability to shift and his timing doing that is a little off um he's got I would say he's got a good football IQ he really does I think he really has a good football IQ I think he's one of those smart players, but the problem is there are a lot of liabilities when you put him in coverage. And at <clears throat> one of the things I, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things I worried about with uh, Peppers was he was at times a liability of coverage, but he was athletic enough to make up for his deficiencies. I am not sure this kid is athletic enough to make up for his deficiencies. One NFL scout for an AFC team quoted as saying he's going to make up for some of those liabilities with his football intelligence. Some does not mean all. All does not mean some. Give the kid a break. Let him try to grow in the position. Don't forget, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We got a big stream coming up. We're going to make a major announcement today about our celebrity guest that will be with us at the October, excuse me, August 21st preseason game against the Bengals. We are giving away one ticket. You'll be hanging out with me, James Williams, OGR, the celebrity guest in the Coaches Club. So make sure you tune in at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, being the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you subscribe, if you ring that button, you know what I mean? That'd be awesome.